Here you can see the very papillary muscle, but this time my ablation catheter went through the mitral valve. And here you can see that how this tissue transeptal approach, I'm sitting on that very tissue as opposed to retrograde approach. So you can see how snug the tissue is here as opposed to a distance between that catheter when we went retrograde. Another example of ablation of PVC originating from anterolateral pap muscle, you can appreciate here. Actually, if you notice that this is patient is in ventricular by Gemini, you can see here, you can see that that is the junction of the chordae and the pap muscle and the PVC is coming from here. I have gone anterograde, and here you can appreciate that this is that very PVC. Uh, here is the V1, V2, there is an M shape, two, three AVF are positive. So this was coming right from this very spot. We had a very good contact. And you can see ablation catheter here is very early. And as soon as we started burning, you can see the bigemini went away and the PVC disappeared and was eliminated. How do we visualize the papillary muscles? For the papillary muscle, if you clock your eyes, you're going to always see the anterolateral pap muscle. And you know that there is a distance between that pap muscle and the posterior wall. It is not sitting on the posterior wall. So you know that this is your anterolateral pap muscle. If I go and clock my eyes a little bit while I'm inside the right ventricle, I'm going to see um, counterclock eyes a little bit. I'm going to see the posterior medial papillary muscle, which you see that it is sitting on the posterior wall. So that is how you can differentiate the anterolateral pap muscle from posterior medial pap muscle of the left ventricle. There is no distance between the posterior medial pap muscle and the posterior wall. Here you can see another case. Interestingly, this patient has two posterior medial pap muscle heads. So this is one and the other one. So there are two posterior medial papillary muscle heads. If I go and clock my eyes, it's going to be two more pap muscles, which are the two more heads, which are the heads of the anterolateral pap muscle. So if I ask you, show me on the kind of Google map, where is this PVC could be coming from? It could be coming from any of these spots if you are going to look at it anterolateral pap muscle. So there is no way that an x-ray would be able to help you to be able to go into those territories and look at it to see where it is coming from. So you can just go ahead and look at it. And here we are going again anti And you can see that that is the anterolateral pap muscle. My ablation is on the anterolateral pap muscle, but the posterior head of it. So this is the posterior head of the anterolateral pap muscle. As I counterclock it, I don't see the ablation catheter anymore. I see the posterior medial pap muscle. Why don't I see ablation catheter? Because ablation catheter is not there. Ablation catheter is by the anterolateral pap muscle. So if I go and clock my eyes a little bit more, I'm going to see the ablation catheter. And I'm going to see that it is sitting so nicely at the junction of chordae and the, post and the posterior head of the anterolateral pap muscle. This is a PVC ablation from posterior medial pap muscle. So I showed you the anterior lateral pap muscle. This is here you can appreciate that uh, this is my ice catheter is actually inside the left H ventricle. Why? So I went through the left H room into the left ventricle because you don't see any septum. There is nothing in front of the ice catheter here. So you can appreciate that my ice catheter actually is inside the left ventricle. So I could see it very clearly. I had gone anterograde into the left ventricle. Here you can see that ablation catheter is actually this one as the distal side of the posterior medial pap muscle. I go ahead and uh, toggle the mirror image and you would be able to see that this is my ablation catheter, posterior medial pap muscle, and I'm embedded actually at the very insertion side of this pap muscle and the posterior wall, distal to the pap muscle kind of. And here, you can see as I'm burning here, you can see this is a posterior medial. This time you see V1, V2, V3, there are M, but there are negative in 2, 3 AVF. So you know that it is posterior medial pap muscle. 
and as I'm burning, you can see the lesion formation here, and subsequently you can see the elimination of the PVC right there. And then this is the last case, left ventricle. This is the posterior medial pap muscle. And you can see how ice is going to be helping you. This is my ablation catheter in the posterior part of the posterior medial pap muscle. When I look at my ice, beautiful, I'm sorry, my electrogram, the, it's, it is very early. But there was a problem there. The problem was that there was a small R wave on the unipolar even though I was very early. So I said, why shouldn't I just try to go? Maybe it is coming from inside. Maybe it's coming from other end. So ultimately, I just went on the other side of this pap muscle, which is, again, the same posterior medial pap muscle, but on the other side of it. And I was able to burn. And actually, we didn't have any R wave in the unipolar here. But here, we just were able to eliminate the PVC. And ultimately, actually, I burned both from this side and went to the other side of it and both, uh, uh, burned from both sides to be able to eliminate that PVC. And with that, I would like to thank you so much. I know it was a long talk, but thank you so much for being patient. Thank you. Those were incredible images. Um, let me just ask a couple questions that came through. There's a common theme on a few of them. Um, it's mostly related to discomfort pushing without looking at fluoro. So how do you assure yourself that you're not going to perforate when you're not looking on fluoro and you're advancing your ice catheter? Excellent question. Um, so, Nisha, interestingly enough, uh, the movie that I showed you today, uh, my mo actually I have about three terabytes of data. So this movie is almost getting to four hour movie. So that part is a completely a separate movie that I would be able to show you. So what it is, basically, you don't, your, when you know the tip of your eyes, the eyes are at the tip of the ice catheter. So when you look at the ice and move and maneuver by looking at the uh, echo-free space at the very leading edge, remember I showed you those two dots? That dot is your ice catheter. So when you see, I, if you have time, actually this is my own computer app at home, I can just <laughs> show you, but I don't know, I, I don't think we have enough time, it's gonna be too long, but I can show you that you want to, if you give me a metal, that I would be able to not to look at that. If you look at that metal or if this catheter for that uh, reason, if it is very stiff, if you look at the x-ray, you perforate. If you look at the x-ray, actually, you perforate. Why? Because you have no clue where that catheter is going, where the ice catheter is going by looking at the x-ray. Because you don't see a wall of the IVC, especially when you are going from the left side, sometimes you know you have to maneuver and go. So by, by just looking at the ice itself, by looking at, so this is ice, kind of this is the IVC, you look at the echo free space and you keep moving. So you, you would even, this is actually the reason it is, I love this catheter because of being stiff. Do you know why? Because first of all, I don't majority of time, I'm by myself. Uh, my tech may or may not scrub with me. I do everything myself and I hold the catheter, the ice catheter. So because it is a little bit stiff, you can just overdo it. Let's say if I want to 40 degree clock it to be able to see one view, I make it 70 degree clock and I let it go. It comes back to that 30 degree comes back, sits there, and I would be able to see that wall and do my ablation. But you, you know, using the ice and using fluoroless technique is like a martial art. You have to start with a white belt. Then you have to earn a yellow belt, a kind of, then a green belt, then a blue belt. You are not going to be like, I, I have cases that, you know, these cases, they have by V, patients have valves, all those things, and you would be able to do it. But that is perhaps for a black belt with few stripes on it. So you want to start slow, but you have to learn the ice. Um, Paul and I, we uh, edited a book which was published uh, last year. All those questions are answered inside the book. The book has almost two and a half hours of this kind of movies in them so that it would show how you would be able to manipulate the ice by looking at the ice itself, being able to see the ice 
in correlation with a neighbors. So you would be able to advance the eyes by looking at the blood around it. If you see a tissue, see where the other blood is going, where the other structure which you are supposed to go, steer it that way. So you would be able to go. But if you're just purely gonna use x-ray to put the eyes up, unfortunately, it's gonna cause complications. 